Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be continuing off with our Pi hosted series. And for those of you who are new, you could catch yourself up with this playlist on the top left or top right, one of these corners. Now, what we're going to be doing today is installing a torrent client with VPN access, as well as a little special surprise I got for you guys. So let's get started. Now to begin, I searched everywhere on the internet for either Google, Reddit, or anywhere to find a ARM-based Portainer app template, which to my surprise, it actually doesn't exist. I, I, I couldn't find anybody who actually made a Portainer app template just for ARM devices or Raspberry Pi in general. So I went ahead and made one. I'm going to talk about it in another video later in the future because I want to be able to get more support from you guys to help uh, maintain this and build it and if there's running into issues, stuff like that. But for just the gist of it, I'm going to show you guys how to apply this new app template onto our Portainer setup soon. Now for this Torrent client, we're actually going to be using Transmission. It's actually very easy to use and it comes pre-shipped with most Linux distros. So you might be familiar with it already. The usability is exactly the same. Now this one is has a little twist to it because it actually supports OpenVPN. And what's good about this is that not only does it support OpenVPN, it will also automatically disconnect your connection if your VPN decides to not work that day or something. So you won't get caught torrenting if you lose that VPN. So that's what's cool about it. Now. As you may know, for the past eight or nine years, I've been using PIA. So this is a time to join up. If you guys are interested, I do have a link down in the description below to give you guys three months free. And you could also cancel at any time. So if you want to follow along, sign up for the PIA, test this out. Now, what's great about PIA is that they also allow you to torrent and they don't have any logs. So that's one of the reasons why I use it. Now, anyway, to jump onto the desktop, here we have uh, our portainer. So you're familiar with seeing this already. And this is my Pi hosted uh, GitHub. So I still got to work on the, I was just talking to my Discord. And if you guys are interested, jump on my Discord. I have a link down in the description below as well. But we're just saying that I should like spruce this up and make this look better. I am going to work on it. I promise. I am going to make this look a lot better. And, but for now, I've been doing a lot of work on our templates. Now, if you head over to, let me see, Pi hosted templates, templates itself, I have the new portainer. Now, as of right now of making this video, I'm only about like 60% through of testing all the images and making sure that it works on ARM and the ones that don't work on ARM at all, I remove from the list. So I am still working on it. It will be complete soon because it doesn't, it take, it's very tedious, but doesn't take too much time. Anyway, to get a hold of this, what you do is head over to a JSON file and then go to raw. And then we just grab this, control C or whatever, you wanna copy it. Head over to your portainer Head back over to the bottom and the app templates right here. Just copy that out and paste the new one. It should say Nova Spirit in between. So we're going to save that setting. And now you just have the new uh, app templates. And with the new app templates, basically it's the same as um, what we're using before, which was self-hosted. I'm taking their app template and then converting it over to what supports on ARM. Um, as an example, one of the things that they didn't have on that app template was JDownloader. I added that in. And if you notice, if I was to do anything else on here, say like what we're going to be installing next, I had to modify it to make it work with Raspberry Pi. So this list does work with all ARM. And you can see Guacamole, I converted it to ARM. I just put it there for now, the little ARM word, just so I know I worked on it. Uh, I'm going to remove those. I've been removing them, but yeah. So here we go. Now that you got the new app template, uh, we're gonna be installing Transmission. If you don't have OpenVPN and you just wanna get the plain client, that works as well right over here on top of each other. But for now, we're gonna be using the OpenVPN. Now, as soon as you jump in, this is all you need, configuring all the settings. Now I'm gonna go down the settings because we do need to change some stuff and I'm gonna show you what we need to do. So first, you do need to change this over to PIA. So we're gonna do PIA like that. Username and password, obviously. Now, if you guys are not using PIA and you have your own provider like Nord or Winscribe or something like that, head over to this website right over here. You see that? It's hard to click, uh, but yeah, you'll be able to go over here and it'll actually tell you what provider you could use. So if you got Viper or Nord or PIA, or you have all these other ones, um, you just have to fill in that little area 
with the provider that you have with the username and the password. So you're not really stuck on using PIA if you don't have it. Now, the next up is your local network. When it detects that the VPN is disconnected, it will actually shut down all the network, but only allow your local network to go in. So you would have to adjust this to what you want access to. So we have 192.168.0.0. Depending on what your network uses, you might want to change this over to what your network is and then dot zero slash 24. So the slash 24 allows for 256 IPs, which is that whole block. If you really are lazy, you could probably keep it at zero zero and change this over to slash 16, which will cover both the subnets. But I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to convert it to that and switch this over to 24. So that local network would go in. Now, we're gonna open up advanced options. You can leave everything the same. I actually made this download the same as the J downloader as well as the other downloads I have. So this is gonna be at the same location where the file manager and J downloader would be at. So if you wanted to change any locations of the files, you can do that over here. Now, in this video, I'm also gonna show you how to edit a template if you need to. So we're doing like a little combo every time we're trying to do these uh, container videos. So right now, I'm gonna actually add all this stuff in and deploy my container. Okay, so I'm gonna deploy the container. Now, if you notice, it's actually starting up and it says that it's OpenVPN, it's not using the latest because the latest actually doesn't work with ARM for some odd reason. So we have to roll back to 3.7. So these are the little things I'm talking about where I tested certain aspects of these programs just to make sure it works on ARM. And this whole list is gonna be filled with them. And I'm gonna be adding a lot more Portainer um, applications in here. I mean, Docker applications in here as well. So going into here, you can see a log. This is not going to work because I actually did not enable something and I did that on purpose just to show you what you need to do. So popping into the transmission VPN, we're going to stop this. Actually, we're going to kill it. Okay. I'm going to hop over to duplicate and edit settings on the top right. Then next thing we're going to do is head over to runtime resources and enable pri privileged mode. Now also in the capabilities, we're actually going to also enable net admin. Those are the two things we do need to enable. So it allows it to create a tunnel device. Now, because I paused it and everything, I'm able to deploy the container. If you don't kill the Docker, it's going to give you an error saying it's unable to copy it over. So now that everything's shifted over, I'm going to go and read my logs. Everything is working properly. There we have it. So I'm going to let this go because it's going to initiate download wherever needs to download. And the first time we log in, we're going to have all our stuff. Now I did test this out before on another image. That's how come you could see that I did download something. So I am going to go ahead and download a torrent as well, just to show you guys. Let's jump into this and see how it runs. So obviously we're going to head back into our Homer. And if you haven't done it already, it's time to update more of your stuff. You can see. Oh, another special thing that I added. Uh -huh. This is going to be cool. If you head over to my Pi host it and go over to the template area, I have images with all the logos. So if now you get clone my Pi host it, you're going to grab all these logos that you need. So now you don't even have to look for them on the internet. You could just copy them from your Pi host it folder over to your Homer folder, and then you should have the new icons. So here we have a new um, Homer setup. It's starting to look pretty good right now because I have more and more tools. And I'm going to head over to my transmission. And actually, I could just delete this because, like I said, I was doing this for testing. So let's remove that. And I don't need that. This is all good and ready to go. Now, I'm going to head over to the container itself. Now, if you go over to logs, all right, I'm going to head over to logs over here. You're also going to scroll up this guy. Let me disable auto refresh. You're going to be able to see the public IP we are currently using for our... Uh, PIA or private internet access and that should be it that's how you know it's connected and that's your public IP now to download something I'm gonna head over to Kubuntu and I'm gonna go for the mirror with the torrent link and this is the BitTorrent link I'm just gonna grab this one save the file and all I have to do is upload it to my torrent uh, to my transmission and right over here, upload, and there we have it. Now give it a couple of seconds, it's gonna start loading and you're gonna see all the settings go in. So it's gonna start loading. Oh, you know what, I gotta select it. Then I'll be able to see all the stuff. There you go. All the peers, where we're connecting from, all the information that we are doing. 
And I could tell that it is using PIA right now because it would be a lot faster, but because I'm on the VPN, that's the limit of what my connection allows for. That is it. Transmission don't have much of a setting. Um, so you could do turtle mode, you could do some settings over here, but there really isn't much of a detailed setting, which is something I like because it's just keep it simple, you know? I mean, if we want to go for a more concrete uh, torrent client, we could probably use Deluge. I like Deluge as a desktop um, application as well. It's really up to you, but transmission works just as well. It's lightweight. It doesn't boggle down the Raspberry Pi too much. That's why I decided to choose this instead of the other ones, but it's up to you if you wanted to install other torrent clients. Now, how do you grab this file? Again, go back into your Homer dashboard, uh, hit file browser, and I have it saved. So it's gonna be right here. So when it's done, it's gonna actually say, complete it. Right now it's incomplete. So it's, you see how that file is right there. It's still in part, but if I want to grab the file, all I have to do is just go to complete it when it's done and it should show up right over there. Right now I only have one. Remember that Ubuntu desktop that I tested, but yeah, let's head back into transmission. This should be done in about three minutes. Anyway, that is it guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of series. I did spend a lot of time just trying to prune and fix up the Portainer app template and I'm going to be building it up from there. I will be making another short video just for that because I need to get help basically to help build on that list. Um, transmission is working great, especially for the Raspberry Pi on this light instant. It's very lightweight, so it's been working really well. And I think on my next video, uh, we're going to sit down and start talking about specs because I started to add all these applications to it. We should start checking out how much RAM and how much things it's actually using on the Raspberry Pi to see how much further we can go because we still got a lot of applications to do, especially Jellyfin, Nextcloud, stuff like that we're going to be adding in we want to make sure that we have enough resources to run those applications anyway that is it for me guys if you guys are new to the channel consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and as i say my nerd cave hack till it hurts